Zing Chow, hello. It is Indy, Atticus, Lover. Uh, I think I've had many names throughout the ages, but yeah. I hope everybody's doing well. I have recommitted to the YouTube channel. I have brought the Magic Hammer. So if you saw my short that I did about one... <laughs> I finally feel that I have earned the right to give a teacher's tip. That after one month, or excuse me, one year and eight months of teaching, can you believe that? Here in Laokai, um, I, uh, yeah, I feel like I, did, I have earned the right to give advice to new teachers. And that advice was, get yourself one of these. And it will make your life so much easier when it comes to controlling classes. For one, when the kids are talking, hey, hey. For two, when a kid jokes around, you clonk, clonk, clonk. And for three, you can throw it like Thor's hammer. And it will fly around and and then come back to your hand. No, I'm just joking on that part. But anyways, um, this video is part three. So I've started, I'm really trying to grow the channel. Um, I'm really trying to get to, uh, uh, get to a a uh, a series uh, a series maybe a five or six part series about helping new teachers and what inspired me to do it was when I first wanted to do this when I first decided hey let's go to Vietnam there was no information for north for anything besides Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City Halong Bay all the big things right but there are there 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 is places in Vietnam which I call the real Vietnam, places that you know most teachers will come here, be able to last for three months, and then they're gone. They think that's gonna be like you know parties and clubs and uh, nightlife and all that stuff like Hanoi, but it's not. This is what I call real Vietnam. This is for teachers who. A special breed of teacher who, who wants to really immerse themselves in the the real lives of like the majority of how uh, Vietnamese people live, and that is such a varied statement. I, I, I mean, granted, I mean you have so many different ethnic tribes that live differently. You have you know disparity between wealth. I mean, you might have somebody living in a metal shack, and you might have somebody living in a, a multi-million dollar home. Uh, you have houses from every shape, color, size, building material. You have people with ponds with koi fish swimming in it. Um, to people living in, you know, in the trees. I've seen so many unique different ways how the Vietnamese uh, people live. And... Um, I call the expat teachers, and I know I'll probably get a lot of hate for any expat teachers who watch this. Any of you uh, ninja teacher viewers, dab on you haters. I'm just playing. Ninja teacher uh, guy, you're pretty cool, man. Uh, even though I will just always be honest, if you guys are looking to become a teacher, you don't need to pay all that money. I, I'm never going to blame a guy for having a hustle, all right? You know what I mean? His program, his hustle, you know, he, 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 he'll he get you a job. Uh, but it is pricey. There is cheaper alternatives, uh, such as uh, Learn TFL. I mean, that's the one that I went through. It was an online class that was probably five times cheaper than what his, you know, that program is. Um, with job placement, you know, so... Uh, I'll, I'll never hate a guy for having a hustle, for you know starting his own business. I just looked into it in the beginning and saw that it was more um, marketed towards young, attractive, uh, a lot of females, more females than guys, which is kind of uh, sus. Did I just say sus? Suspect. Um, and for... You know, maybe first timers looking for a more active partying, you know, uh, maybe the first time out of college kind of, you know, lives. 
So for everybody else, though, like me, who's not in it for the party, who's not in it to hook up, who's in it for the actual adventure, who wants to have a life full of stories and write a book one day, you know, write a, write a book one day, talking about all these grand adventures that I went on and the things that I saw and the amazing Vietnamese people that I met. And my God, especially in the last couple months, which have been some of the worst months of my life, with so many bad things happening, health-wise, mental health, uh, stress, anxiety, uh, work problems, uh, losing some people. I mean, it, it, it was definitely... I thought I was at my wit's end. I thought it was the end of this dream. And I... Um, I... At the last minute, and I got a lot of hate for this, at the last minute, and I'm talking 15 minutes before a moving truck was to show up to my apartment, I followed my heart, as I mentioned in previous videos, and I took a one in a thousand shot. There was, there was one other opportunity that I could take. And it was seriously like hitting the Death Star as Luke Skywalker. You have a small hole, and like shooting wombats, right? But something just told me, like, you know, if you're going to go out, go out. Go, have a say in the way that you go out. Go out in your own way, you know? Don't go out just because other people told you how to do it. If you're going to, if your dream comes to an end, then let it end on your terms but the great news is the amazing news is which i'm so happy to report is that it did not end and it looks like that i will be able to continue this amazing experience this amazing journey that i've been on for the last one year eight months i can't wait to get that two-year mark we're so close but anyways uh so this is part three we've talked about the uh interview process um, what to expect from the very beginning, from when you apply online, get that first phone call, how the recruiter will work on behalf of you, will advocate for you um, to different schools. So usually a recruiter will have a list, or, you know, will have a whole list of just different schools from all different countries and they'll just call them up hey are you hiring hey are you hiring i have this candidate i can forward you you know his or her rv uh, rv excuse me cv uh, resume and yeah and then they'll get paid if they could you know obviously bring the school a qualified candidate and then i made a video about some of the challenges that you're going to face when you first move um, my challenges are might be a lot different from yours since I came right during the heart beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm talking, it was, there was one small opening in the last two years that they allowed new teachers to come into the country. And I was, somehow fate had it that I was the one part of that group that made it in. And I mean, we were literally met with people with hazmat suits, quarantined for weeks on end and trapped in rooms and hotels. I mean, it was, imagine your first time in a different country, or Vietnam, excuse me, and you're greeted in hazmat suits, forced into hazmat suits, shuttled away in buses to quarantine hotels. I mean, it was just, it, it was, it was an adventure. So for part three, I thought that we will talk about, since we've talked about the interview process, we've talked about some of the challenges of um, what to expect when you're in uh, rural parts of Vietnam, uh, maybe we will talk about your first couple of days of what it like, will be like at the school. Um, now, each school is going to differ is going to differ, is going to be very, I can't talk, is going to vary very differently. Is, uh, am I saying that right? Blah. My English teacher, here, let me hit myself with a hammer. Uh, so, yeah, there is schools in Hanoi, 
which will expect so much more uh, of you than maybe somewhere more rural that will be more relaxed with their expectations and their training and their their uh, quality control or their um, micromanaging of you. So for uh, for example, here in Lao Cai, my first job, you know, was with a company Apex English, which is if anybody has been watching the news knows the horror story of that that place. But we're not going to get into that in that video. Their training program was, since we were in a COVID lockdown, was two days online. So imagine being trained how to be a teacher with a whole online, you know, touchscreen TV, share drive, you know, all this stuff that takes weeks, months to master. And you're doing it online. So you can't even hands on it, right? You're not even part of it. You're locked in a hotel room. So the training really was my first day. You, I went to the center, and yeah, I'm in a tie. I dressed up very nice, and you'll come to find out that most schools don't require you to dress up like that. You can. Um, it will make a good impression, but as the years have gone by, I've noticed most teachers uh, just business casual, or even some teachers, the younger guys would just wear just normal clothes. Uh, girls, I've seen some really cool uh, styles that uh, um, girl teachers, female women teachers uh, will be it from like hippie dresses to, uh, you know, business suits, you know, you know, to, um, to just jeans and a shirt. I mean, so there is such a variety. Uh, some schools require uniforms, some do not. Uh, thankfully, I've not had a school yet that's required a uniform, uh, just because I think uniforms are tacky. I think if you're going to be a teacher, if you want to appear professional, then dress the part. We're in a, we're in a, a company polo that makes you look like everybody else doesn't separate you from a teacher, from a support staff. Not to say that a teacher's better. But for, you know, from a marketing standpoint, if you're trying to sell a teacher, you know, to a potential parent, like, hey, you know, this is a qualified professional. This is somebody who is, you know, spent, you know, four years at least in college and another 150 credit hours getting his or her teaching English as a foreign language certificate, TEFL. Um, you know, it's important to maybe look, to, you know, to be, look apart. So, um, but yeah, my first, so keep in mind that where you go in Vietnam, be it Ho Chi Minh City, which I have no idea. I can't give you any advice on Ho Chi Minh City, and I have no desire to ever go to that city. Uh, there is some cool guys, though. There's some, there's some cool guys that on YouTube channels. So I, I've watched so many different YouTubers who live in Vietnam and blog, uh, give tips. The thing that I'm trying to do, the thing that I'm trying to start, I've watched a lot of guys who do, and girls who do it themselves. And there's a lot of them who are in Ho Chi Minh City. And boy, did they get hit bad during the lockdowns last year. I mean, they, they had it the worst. Uh, but Ho Chi Minh City, I, I just couldn't deal with that many people, that much pollution, the noise, the crowdedness, the chaoticness. I mean, Hanoi is already like that, but Ho Chi Minh City, from what I hear and have I seen, from what I've been told, is, I mean, it, it's a, it, it's like India, you know, like like one of some of the busiest cities in India, shoulder to shoulder, you know, exhaust to exhaust, you're breathing in the exhaust. Hanoi's like that too, granted, but... Um, but anyways, yeah, so what I consider as a real teacher, um, the true teachers is the ones who are not afraid to go to the parts of Vietnam that scare away most travelers, that most that you will not see tourists, you will not see expats. You might be the only expat there, maybe one or two, three at most. But yeah, I mean, you're li literally living the Vietnamese lifestyle. You are earning the right to call yourself 
Vietnamese, Vietnamese, at least by the way you live. And let me tell you, the way that Vietnamese live is so much more rewarding, healthier, and enriching than than even you know not not to disrespect my own culture or my country. I'm I'm very patriotic and I love love my country, but we are not a healthy country. Psychologically, we're divided by politics, health. We're we're, we're corrupted by processed foods. Our family units are not close at all. Um, we have you know uh, uh, drug ep- epidemics. I think you know um, crime soaring, inflation. I mean that's that can happen in any country though. That's not specific, but Vietnam. Um, is a very classy, a very, at least North Vietnam is very classy, very traditional, um, and but it's very hard. It is some of the hardest working people I have ever seen. I'm talking people who will work two or three jobs, work 16 hour, 18 hour days. I mean, some people will even say that their life is living, or excuse me, their their life is working. That they find enjoyment in life through work, and I once I was that, that seems so alien to me. I couldn't understand that, but you know, I, I I've asked a few people, and they say you know, a lot of the times you'll have a a family, a large family living together in a small you know house, maybe only a two three bedroom house, and you'll have you know your grandma, grand grandfather. Brothers, sisters, their children, you have all these people. So your work becomes a second home. So work becomes a way to escape, you know, escape that crowdedness, to have some kind of variety, to have a change of pace. So versus in America, we don't really have that standpoint. Whereas we see, well, I can speak for me. I can't speak for everybody. But for anybody who's been minimum wage, anybody who's not been you know, making six digits, you know, six figures a year, just normal college people like me, you know, we all hate our jobs, nine times out of ten. We do it because we have to. And we're very thankful that we're limited to 40-hour work weeks. Because in America, we find, at least I find, fulfillment after work. You know, like my free time is a, a more important currency than... Than, than money. I would rather have 10 hours on a beach of reading a book than an extra $10,000. Well, maybe not 10000 but an extra $100. $10,000 is a lot of money. But you get my point. Time is the currency that I like. Now, money is important. You can't do dreams unless you have it, so you got to find that balance. I struggle with that, but um, yeah. So understand, though, that where you go is going to dictate what your experience will be like at the school the first couple of days. Uh, generally, most schools will have a training program that will consist of, um, it could be anything from online, it could be anything from having uh, demo classes, uh, it could be anything from role-playing with your training group, or you might be doing it individually. Um you will learn different levels, anything from preschool levels where literally you're doing two flashcards. That is your lesson, 30 minutes and you have two flashcards. Say you're doing a a lesson on eyes and ears and yeah, you'll play a song and you'll do a lesson and a game's all about that. All the way to teaching kids advanced essays and if that is, you know, what you're knowledgeable at. So, but yeah, your training is going to teach you, you know, there's a lot of things such as like, uh, um, what what I call it, uh, share drives. Um, In Vietnam, Microsoft is the the, the go-to when it comes to office school things. Every school I've ever went to has used Microsoft. So Outlook, share drive, Slack, stuff like that. You had to be familiar with that. Any online 
uh, duties such as grading, attendance records. Some schools have that, some don't. It just all depends on where you go to. There is language centers that have very, very small budgets, very small clienteles that don't require to have all that extra fancy stuff. Then you have places like uh, the job that I turned down um, um, before, I'll stay vague, that was one of the most prestigious schools in one of the biggest cities. Uh, but my God, the induction package that they sent me was like 90 pages long. And it, I mean, literally you have a people observing you who observe them, who observe them. And then you do a report about how you think you did. And then you workshop that. And then you watch somebody else. And then you talk about it for five hours. And you're being graded on this and graded on that while you're following this and writing individual reports on this. Meeting with parents. And I mean, just such ridiculously extra work. If that is your thing, then yeah, go for it. But if you're like me, if you're just, you know, just want to be a good teacher... But that's not the main reason you're here. The main reason you're here is to experience Vietnam. But also, you do care about your students, don't get me wrong. Then, yeah, don't go for these really huge, big, you know, go for something a little bit smaller, a little bit more humble. Uh, um, luckily, my first day, there was a welcoming party. So the Vietnamese staff will, uh, in my experience will always try to make you feel welcome, especially if you're a foreigner, because I'm sure they can, you know, uh, sympathize with you, you know, like how scary that must be, you, you know, you're thousands of miles away from home, from what, depending on what country you're from, you know, your first day at work, you might not speak the language, so they're going to, you know, at least for me, they had a cake waiting for me, there was like 20 people in there, uh, they ask me questions about my life. Uh, get used to people asking you, are you married? Uh, da, 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 your relationship status, your age. Um, in Vietnam, that's very common. I always stay vague. Just stay vague. You know, information is power. So don't give it to anybody. So when somebody asks you, are you married? How old you are? Just joke. I always say a hundred years old. And if I'm say if if someone says if I'm married, I say to su success or to my dreams. Oh, you know, always deflect because you never know. You know that could be used against you. So always be careful what information you give out. Um, they had a cake for me, and then I was literally thrown to the wolves. I was thrown to the class and expected to um, to teach. And yeah, it was sink or swim. And there was one other teacher at the time, and I would, her name was Katie. And yeah, she had been there maybe six months longer before me. And she was, yeah, she, the, the hippiest of all hippies. Cool, relaxed, chill. You know, she uh, preferred working with the young learners. At the time, I didn't, just because I didn't understand. I, I thought it was kind of boring to just do the basics of A, ah, ah. But now I've realized that there is enjoyment that can be found and stuff like that. You just have to understand ways to make it fun. You can't treat it like a college lecture. But uh, yeah, yeah I, she was my, my lifeline. And I just asked her question after question after question after question. And there's a expression in Vietnam that expats will, will say to each other. So, I mean, it's a revolving door. One comes in, one goes out. The guy that I took his apartment, um, his name was Anton. And he gave me a scooter and said, hey, I'm paying it forward. One day when you leave, do the same. Give something, help somebody out, help a new teacher out with advice, show them around the city, you know, like help each other out. And uh, yeah, she did that. And, you know, and somehow, you know, you just make it. And that first class, that first time, you know, you're going to overthink it. You're going to sit there. You're going to have notes papers planned out, you're going to have everything, you're going to expect your students to come in there and just sit there and be respectful, it's not going to go as planned, it's not, just expect that, 
whatever you plan, it's not going to go as planned. So the number one advice I will give you is do not take life teaching that first day so serious. Like, just don't. Don't go in there and get mad because your students don't, you know, sit there all quiet. Now, they might be nervous at you at first, but generally, you know, I mean, they've seen so many teachers. For all they know, you're just a substitute, you know. So just your job is not to control them and your job is is to to teach them. And the best way to teach them is to have fun, laugh, get them to smile, you know, make an impression on them. So don't wait don't make the same mistake I did wasting hours of preparation, paperwork, rules, speeches, seating arrangements and all this stuff because it doesn't matter. That is not what a student's going to judge you on. A student is going to judge you on, first off, your confidence. So don't just stand up there all shy. Walk around the class. Go up to a student. Walk right up to them. Hey, tap on their desk if they're not listening. What's your name? All right, all right. I need you to be quiet, man. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool. Give him a fist bump. All right, you know, tell people about yourself. My name is Teacher Indy. Where am I from? Take a guess, you know, make a joke, do a dab on them, you know, uh, do it, be unexpected, just have fun. That is what it's all about, is have fun. But do not let them walk over you. You have to set a tone. Do not be afraid to say, hey, guys, I need you to be quiet. And there's different incentives and different ways that you can do it. The carrot, the stick. Uh, dollar system, point system, stickers, stars, whatever your method is, you know what I mean? But yeah, even in your first day, you need to set that tone. You need a tone that, hey, you'll have fun, but you got you to gotta at least be quiet when I'm talking. You got to listen and you got to try. You can't, no cell phones, you know, out. You can't have kids falling asleep, you know. Um, if you have a noisy kid who just won't pay attention, do what I do. Hey, buddy, let me, you know, you know, come out, let me talk to you. And make him get up in front of the class, walk outside, go outside the classroom and just say, hey, buddy, what's wrong? You know, be, be very nice to him and just say, is everything okay? You know, you know, why are you disturbing the class? Are you having a bad day? Is there anything I can help you with? And they'll, you know, they'll be surprised that you, that first off, that you cared enough. Second of all, you're, you, that you, you're calling them out so they know that, okay, if I act out, I'm going to get called out. Even if you're, you know, even if you're, there's really nothing you could do. It's just the fact to them that they know that they will be held accountable. And then when they walk back in, the other kids are going to be like, oh, wow, what happened? You know, they won't know. And you, and you don't mention anything. You don't say, you're like, hey, you, know, you don't want to be like that kid. Just treat them with respect and move on with your lesson. But, like I said, it's important to have fun. That first couple days, that training, that training. Oh, and that's another thing. Most of the training that you receive will not be relevant to what it's really like. At least not in the schools that I've taught for. Maybe 40% of what I've learned actually applied to the classroom. Like, I, like today, for example, I had a, I had a class and... Most of it is improvising. You know, you read the classroom. You could plan all you want. You could have these fancy schools that want, you know, detailed lesson plans of how long you're going to do things and how many minutes you'll spend doing this and what's the objective of that. But in my opinion, that's all BS. But, you know, to each their own, you know. In my opinion, you read the class. You find what they're good at, what they need help with. You change your lesson as needed. So if you had scheduled 15 minutes to go over stressed vowels, but you notice that your kids already know it, are you really going to waste 15 minutes going over something that every kid knows? Or maybe you could use, you know, change it right then. Change your lesson and go to something else. Move on to the next section. Maybe, you know, like, all right, well, then let's practice um, 
going over some new vocabulary words or, um, you know, let's practice our pronunciation, uh, reading a, a paragraph. So, yeah, don't be afraid to deviate from your lesson plan. Some schools, though, will get on your butt about that. Some schools do not tolerate that. But in my opinion, like, hey, I'm the teacher. You have to trust me. Now, if I'm not pr providing results, then yes, I understand. You know, I, I am your employee. You're paying me. Therefore, I will do what you ask me. But uh, nine times out of ten, if you could produce results, they'll trust you, okay? But not all. Some of them, they, some of them they, you know, they don't speak English very well when it comes to I'm talking like managers or so. So they, the only way that they could judge a class's success is, is, is if you follow, if you're following, you know, step by step, minute by minute, this, you know, arbitrary, irrelevant lesson plan. And let me tell you, these lesson plans are my least favorite thing about teaching. It is such, uh, not, not planning a lesson, but the typing of it. Because usually what it looks like, and I don't want to show the school, so I won't show the school. Let me block that so I don't give away any information. But yeah, you'll have things like this, you know. You'll have a time slot. You'll have like what you're going to do, what your objectives are. You'll have to have a part in Vietnamese, how many minutes you're going to spend doing it. And you're supposed to have one of those for each lesson, submit it to the teacher, some schools might have a head teacher. They'll approve it. Luckily, I don't have to deal with If you go, remember, the more rural, the more you know, country that you go, stay away from the big cities, the easier it's going to be. And the less of this kind of crap you'll have to do. Part of my language. And it's not crap. It is useful. I mean, there is times that you will look at it to be reminded of what you need to do. But spending, like my philosophy is when I'm done with work, I'm done with work. I don't like to go home and spend another two hours working on a lesson plan for the next day. When I'm done, when I when I do my duties, and if I do a good lesson, I'm done. You know, and that's the kind of teaching I like. But um, yeah, so that that is just a very brief. I know I was kind of all over the place, but I'm trying to help you. Very few teachers who will ever venture far north. Vietnam, places like Lao Cai, places like Sapa, um, Da Lat, who, wherever, you know, northern provinces there is, places that are above Hanoi, you know, your, your rural areas, you know, the places that you don't see on the postcards or on the advertising, uh, you know, brochures, the places the recruiters aren't going to try to sell you to. But let me tell you, those are the more rewarding places. Because Hanoi is just another New York. Ho Chi Minh City is just another, you know, Dubai or, you know, Paris 